that's a good whoop whoop. I'm going to give I you know, that I know, I'm right. We are super excited that you are here with us today. We are. Um, it has been a very fun day today. It has been. Um, from a few different things that we've been filming and doing. Exactly. Hit the oil fields. Yeah, we hit the oil fields. Uh, that was, that <laughs> was, was that a fun was, one. Yeah, you we'll didn't get to watch that. that. If you didn't get to watch that comedy a minute and 30 some seconds, you should go watch it. Definitely. We were just having fun. No pun intended. Just having fun with it. Anyway. Okay. So, again... What? I'm, I'm thinking through Processing. Your, 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 your stuff that you said. Yes, yes, there it is. Okay, sorry. So anyway, <laughs> while we are waiting on a few people to get on, um, we're, uh, we're, just, uh, we're just excited to be here, right? Yeah, did you lose your train of thought? I did lose yeah, my train did. of thought. <laughs> <laughs> uh, <laughs> everyone's phones are all going off at the same I time know. in the studio. Um, I w well, first off, though, I wanted okay. to thank everybody for their great ideas. Yes, um, so we're starting back our giveaways, and in the giveaway form, there is an option for you to enter in some ideas you'd like to see yeah. on future segments here at After Hours, and we had a ton of ideas. We did. Um, I love Excel, so I had a great, a lot of good put <laughs> all together and come up with all sorts of bar graphs and everything, Yeah. Um, but a lot of great ideas. Um, we we're using a few of them today yeah. um, in our segment, and I hope that you're really going to enjoy it, and we um, keep Keep looking them forward coming. to having those um, ideas coming yeah because we don't know what you want to see unless you tell us yeah we have lots of good ideas that we do ourselves but you know it's always good to hear from other people well, then, we too, can then we can then we can spin off that idea <laughs> exactly. um also remember um if you want your quilt to be featured in our next episode of um let's how quilt, quilt that how would you quilt, how would you quilt that? that how would you quilt that today is let's quilt that that's right no, that's in, in the next that. episode of how would you quilt that um make sure that you email us those um pictures and the email is in the description below it is i put it there okay i was gonna say i didn't put an email <laughs> in the description below <laughs> I, knew, I did that i knew you wouldn't do okay, that okay thanks. so before we get started uh, as always make sure you subscribe to our channel uh, it's gonna be right down at the bottom right hand corner underneath the video click that subscribe button yep. um, so you can get notified whenever we post new videos go live here at after hours and whatever else we're doing here on youtube who knows uh, also give this video a big thumbs up and share it with your friends because today is going to be a fun one exactly and don't forget to hit that bell to be notified because that's how you know when we're live someone's been paying attention to my public service announcement every week ding 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 it's All finally right. happened <laughs> all righty so to to get started to slowly get started while we're waiting on a few more people to get on mm -hmm. how many of you have ever purchased our skill builder stuff um and i'm talking about this skill builder stuff so like the filler for Ness, the companion uh, series one mm, and two, mastery book, mastery you know, all book. sorts of stuff like that. How many of you have pur purchased this and, and tried it? Because I'm just curious on how many people have tried different tech, or if you've purchased another pre-printed fabric and just tried freehanding and trying ideas. Because that's kind of what we're doing today. It's not on this because we've already showed you. It's mm -hmm. on something totally cool and new that we um, also got from the same company. Correct. So if you haven't checked these videos out, also make sure you go check them out for sure. Yeah. Because there's some really cool ideas with them. Mm -hmm. um, but tonight's video I am super excited about. Yes. Um, I talked with the uh, owner of the company. Uh -huh. and she said that they really don't um, sell this that often because no one's ever really pushed it. And I was like, oh, challenge accepted. Yeah, I'm right. Done. Hi, Dana. Um, <laughs> so, um, with this one right here, this is called the Traditional Blocks Set. It is on our website. Yes. And there are six pre-printed 16, 16 by 16 inch blocks yes. in this set. Um, and they're really cool from learning, you know, a bunch of different freehand yeah, standpoints. Yeah. Um, tonight, what we've done is we've sewn them all together in a row. So yeah, kind of like a bed runner. So, to make it look like a bed runner. So, it's going to have like 90 inches 96. wide, 96 inches, something like that wide. Which, um, you know, you could do, sew it together and practice, and then have a bed runner at the end of it. Right. Or if you buy two, then you could do like a three by four section, have 12 blocks, oh, yeah. and have oh, a yeah. quilt afterwards. That's after true. That, have That's true. Um, so, like I said, six different blocks. So, let's kind of look through them here. This is going to be one of it, and it's good quality. Good quality. Now, the ink does not wash out. That's right. So, if you do wash this, ink's not going anywhere. Mm -hmm. um, but you have all six of these, and they're all different. Uh, and we've chosen to do four today. Yeah, we're going to quilt out four today so we don't keep you forever. But there's, uh, we'll give you some ideas. Forever. Forever. Okay. <laughs> uh, <laughs> that was great. <laughs> um, but really cool. Nice packaging. I like um, to catch you off guard nice when I can. Thank you. I appreciate that. 
Um, but yeah, available on our website. You can go ahead and grab them now, uh, along with that pint size oil that we went and <laughs> dug up this morning. Um, <laughs> um, but some really cute blocks. So we're going to take you through uh, drawing out a few of them mm -hmm. uh, when it comes to the design aspect and then heading over to the quilting machine and actually quilting our designs out. Yes, but first I want to thank everybody that's watching live. We really appreciate it. See lots of people on there. Some of the people that have, have already purchased this and just haven't done anything with it. So right. glad you are watching so you can kind of get an idea of how to do some testing on it. Definitely. All right, so let's go overhead, Corey. Okay. So I am up first today. And I am working on what block is this, Diana? So the name of this block is called Crown of Thorns. Interesting name for a block here. Um, so what I've done here is I've taken some inspiration from our Designs with Lines books. Um, for those of you that have been following us for a while, we do all sorts of different um, quilting ideas out of these Designs with Lines books. And so what we're looking at here is showing you how to really take apart a block like this and quilt it out to get that... Um, uh, practice in. Yep. And so when I see this here, I see a diamond block right here in the center. But if I turn that on the side, I see just a regular square. And a great use of squares is the basic eight series. Yes, it is. Okay? Mm -hmm. So what we're going to be doing is I will actually use pounce powder and I'm going to pounce out my basic eight here on the on the long arm when we go over, but this is what that's going to look like. And I can just throw that basic eight right over and get some nice lines to work with here. And I can put that pounce powder on, and that's going to give me nice uh, breaking points for this block. So I can just dot these in real quick, nothing crazy. And we always like to kind of show you it drawn out first before we go over to the machine, just so you can see it's okay to, you know, take your time and test some theories out and things. And we do that. We sit there and we test lots of theories out. Yeah, definitely. Um, so for this one, what I wanted to do is kind of keep this, uh, this block pretty modern. There's going to be a tad of traditional in here, but pretty modern. And so what I'm doing is I'm going to start here in the center, and I am going to basically be doing a S curve or an S arc um, all the way down here and back. And what that's going to end up looking like is pearls. And it's a little harder to draw out when I'm doing it here. But it's going to end up looking like these pearls when you come back in. And if you can't get the pearls perfect like that, you end up having, you can make it, you know, even lo elongated ovals. You can do all sorts of things. Mm -hmm. um, but you're, we're trying to keep it stitching continuously. Um, so as we're working around, we could do just this S back and forth, come back around, and that's going to create these nice little pearls. And you're going to be doing that all the way throughout here. We're starting and stopping here in the center. Okay, that looks so good. Far. Yeah, what's the next thing you're doing all on? All right. So next thing, I'm going to do some continuous curves out here uh, in these triangles. A great book for that would be tr the Triangle Tango book. You get some really great ideas out of the triangles. Uh, it's not over here on set, but you, you've seen it before. And so what I'm going to do is I'll say I'll start right here. This will be my starting point. And I'm just going to do a nice simple arc. And I'm doing all the outside ones first. All the way around this. Just like so. And on my way back, what I'm going to do is do a little pearl or a little loop on the arc on the way back. So we've stopped here. We're going to head our way back over here. Stop about midway. Throw in a little pearl and keep going. Now that one was kind of backwards of how the natural flow of the machine would go. So I could go this way, go that, and end up like that. Here, little pearl, here, here, little pearl, there. Here. Perfect. There, something like that. Okay. All right, what else are you doing on that one? All right, next thing I'm gonna take is I will be doing the straight line stencil right out here. So I would take my straight line stencil. This is gonna get pounced down. And this is going to give me some nice straight lines. I'll even use a ruler. And I'm just going to do straight lines every inch apart using my ruler and using Stitch in the Ditch along this block. And that's going to go in all of these, more or less. And you can do that all the way around that section. Good. What? I'm doing that too. Oh, you're doing that too? I can do something else. No, that's okay. Go okay. ahead. <laughs> I like the way you're, oh, oh, you are doing it on that other one. Oh, well, well, there's multiple ways to see it. <laughs> this works. Yep. Um, and here I'm taking something out of Triangle Tango as well, uh, splitting this in to just some feathers. I told you there'd be, oh, there's always going to be some feathers somewhere. So starting here, I would come in with a nice deep feather and just work my way up. Oh, that's, I like that. This, and then fill it back the other I way. I was trying to practice feathers like the way you do it there, and I was not doing very well. <laughs> so I went to something else. <laughs> So I've got that there. These tiny little squares are going to be continuous curves again. 
We always love a good continuous curve. And then in the background, I'm going to do my favorite, which is ribbon candy. Um, these triangle sections down here at the bottom, these are going to be straight up and down vertical sections like this. But as I get to the side, I'm actually going to take those on a 45 and go this way with it. Oh, some fun kind of ribbon candy. Is that ribbon candy that's or ribbon no? ribbon candy, yeah. Okay. So, no, 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 no. Awesome. And I'm going to take that all the way around, and that's that whole block. Let's see it. I can't wait to see it over there. Okay. So we will head over to the machine, and let's take a look at what I'm doing. I've got cords. I can make it. <laughs> I can make this happen. So walking over to the machine here, and I'm going to grab my um, tools that I'll need for this. So I've got my basic eight, my straight line stencil, some pounce powder, a chalk pencil. I've got my ruler. I've got a ruler base on the machine as well. If you're ever doing ruler work, it always helps um, to have that ruler base on to have that nice, steady, uh, flat surface. And I'm coming up in here. And I'm going to first start off with those pearls in the center. So I'm going to come in with my basic eight and label side down on this stencil. Line these bad boys up with this block. And you could, if you wanted to, do stitch in the ditch on these blocks beforehand, uh, as long as you're not crossing over those piecing lines when you're doing your quilt design, that would be fine. Um, so, but you could have those blocks stitched in the ditch so they'd be a little bit more stable for you. So I'm coming in with my pounce powder, just like that over this design. And then I can set this over to the side and there's my pounce. Isn't that pretty? It's nice. Yes. And I'll wipe away that excess because I just need a little bit of it. There we go. All right. Regulated mode tonight, 12 stitches per inch, starting here in the center as I am working around this. All right, tying those stitches off. And what I could do here as well, and it just kind of hit me, um, for those of you that were maybe feeling a little concerned about doing that S to do your uh, pearls all the way, you could do your flat line pearl to where it actually gives you a nice circular motion like we've learned and then when you get here to do your stitch in the ditch or when you get here excuse me to the end you could do stitch in the ditch in this corner and then do your flat line pearls on the way back so then on the back it ends up looking like a pinwheel even because this would be the piece of that pinwheel okay makes sense mm -hmm. so let's do it that way um so i've got it tied off and i'm gonna when i what i mean by flat line pearl is you're basically make starting out with more of a flat line and looping it around it's going to end up looking like a circle so a little bit of a flat line and loop. Just like so. Here to the end, ending off. I'm going to come in with my ruler so I can have a nice edge. And we're actually going to do stitch in the ditch on the way back. So we're actually going to do this flat line one. So I'm going to hold nice pressure with that ruler. And this is just going to allow me to easily manipulate the machine to go whatever direction I want it to. And then down there I can move my ruler. And then here I can do those flat line pearls again. Just like that. using that basic eight line stencil to follow my way around. Looks good. Diana, you're really quiet tonight. No, oh, I'm just watching. Gotta get your hand out of the way though. I know it's hard putting our hands. And then back. Finish. And I'm just quilting that away as I'm going. Starting off with more of that flat line, trying to zoom through so I can get you through to the next portion. Stop it there. Let me trim my thread so I don't have to keep doing that. There we go. Take this on its way down here. And then once I'm there, take that off and then I can work my way around. I don't think the base is on all the way. Oh, okay. Anyway, go ahead. Ah. You're messing with my base. <laughs> I 
coming in, touching the ends of those pearls to end up making them look a little better um, would give you a nice, uh, nicer look even. Um, so I can get that there. Using this to give myself a nice flat look, letting go of the ruler, and then continuously going. Okay. Just like that. Perfect. And if you wanted to do a little bit more of a rotation there with that, you could have used the spider web stencil, and that would have given you more lines in here, and you could have had more pearls in this section than at that point. All right, so what's your next thing? Next thing here Dude. is going to be using the uh, continuous curve method. So we're going to start here at the bottom, tie off, and go with a nice arc here. So arcing point, 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 point. Point, 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 and this one on the way back, we're going to do that pearl right about here. Um, and using that basic eight line that we have kind of kind of has given us a nice center point to work from where we want to stop to put that pearl in. So you could use your chalk pencil even to go in there and throw that in. So we're going to take this on the way back, we're about at that center mark, throw in a pearl. And continue on. Center mark, pearl. That was some type of pearl there. Continue on. Center mark, pearl. Continue on. Center mark, pearl. Continue on. All right. Just like That's that. Good. Okay. Um, in these outer portions, this is where we were going to do these lines. So since we're already here, we can keep going with our lines. And I can use my ruler to give myself a nice little spacing here, but I want to go ahead and pounce out those one inch lines that I'm going to be doing. And I can set that here. And these are going to be a little larger sections that I can work from and just come down in with my pounce powder, pounce that section on, and that'll just give you all that visual for there. And then I can just kind of eyeball the rest of them. So then at this point, this is where you'd be figuring out, okay, what path, what direction do I take to keep this stitching continuously? And what I would be doing is I would go straight over and then drop down, over, up, over, down, over, up, and that gets me into this section where then I can just keep going all the way around. Okay. So at this point we'd be heading to the right here. So very slow on that. And then I could take my ruler, come down, go on a little bit of an angle here. And I'm holding a little bit of pressure with this ruler. Um, and what that's going to do is help guide this machine in that line that I want to follow. And I love that our rulers have lines in them that I can see through. You know what I mean, Diana? So yeah. I can line that up and get it nice and straight. You know, and I never thought about that before. I always wondered, seriously, like, why the rulers had so many lines. But now that I've been using them more with you, it makes more sense now. It's the best way to do it. Yeah. And you can get it all lined up the way that you want it to. And then once you're there, you can continue on. Just like that. And so for this instance, I'd be traveling down this way, and I love this. I can get a good grip on that ruler and set this, and a little harder when a camera is right next to me, but <laughs> <laughs> I can make it work. So that would give me that, and I would be doing these nice lines all the way around. So you could go ahead and have them all pre-pounced out. That way um, it would save you from having to worry about that. So I can take pounce outer, pounce this one, move over here, pounce that one, come up here. Pounce, pounce. You don't need a whole lot of that pounce powder to make a statement or to make it work for you. All right, let's see what's going on down here. So just like that, you could work your way all the way around. So what I'm going to do is start doing, um, since I'm here, we're going to skip the rest of these lines, just do my little ribbon candy so you have that idea of what I'm doing there. So ribbon candy just gives you a nice wave. You don't even need a ruler to do it. And then you'd be working. And this is just that background there. That looks good. Mm -hmm. This gives it a nice background. You could even do, and this is where I'm going on the 45 now, you could even do a, um, a similar color to the background. 
That way it just blends in and just has that nice little quilting in the background just to kind of set it down. And I'll finish this one off. I'll do the feathers real quick and then the rest of it's just something you get to imagine. So do that and then I'll do my feathers here real quick so you can see how that would work. And I'm just going to jump over and do it here. Tie that off. And for this one, have a nice straight line to follow from when I pounce those lines for the background. So that's where I can just kind of come back to. Just like that. Looks good. And that's what I would do over that entire block, and that gets you going, keeps it looking really nice. All right, Diana, what are you drawing for us? Oh, let me see. Let me get on over here and we'll go overhead and I will grab mine out. Oh, nothing like being alive and trying to get from place to place. Okay, so we're going to take his out and then a napkin or paper towel. If not, we'll just use my hands. Let's see. Oh, you know what? We can use that batting down there, a piece of batting. Thank you. Alrighty, let me take all that off with this huge piece of batting. <laughs> Sorry, I've got a piece of that off later. Alright, so I am actually going to do kind of a, some of the straight lines that Corey was doing. Um, and I'm going to, let me get my little notes out because I'm not on the fly as well as he is. So, okay. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to stitch out, I would stitch out my center. So I would put my basic eight here, and then I would make my little mark like he was kind of doing. So down, across, kind of like that. And this isn't to scale. And then I'm going to be pulling up my thread a few times instead of continuous. Um, but I thought that I would go around up, down, up, down on this corner. Down. And I'm trying to meet up with the corners, and it's really nice with the basic gate because it's giving me that guideline to go up. So that's going to kind of be my center, and then after I got my center done, I was going to kind of pounce out lines across the blue, up, up and down, and then across the red sideways. So we'll pretend that there's a pounce here, at least down here on this one. And then I will have lines here. And then I'm kind of, kind of what Corey was doing over there, where you line up with this. And it'll be on the one inch. And then I'm going to go up all the way, over, up all the way, over, and meet up with my lines there. And why Diana is doing that, we had a question in the comments. These are, uh, these blocks, there's six of these blocks in the package, and they're 16 inches by 16 inches square. And then on the, di the side, I'm going to do the same thing where we're going to go one inch. And I'm just doing, and I have to tell you, I sat here and played for, what, 30 minutes to an hour trying to figure out what I was going to do. That's, not, that's, uh, that's what it takes sometimes, you know. Yeah, and it's still, uh, it's still not perfect, but it gives you an idea of what I'm going to try to do over there anyway. Mm -hmm. And that's uh, the top, the center, and then I was just going to kind of freehand it over here in the sides. So I was kind of playing. So I was asking Corey, I'm like, what's a, you know, a good idea to keep continuous? And you go up to the corner. And I like when they, these these um, oops, panels, because they have so many lines in them, you know, for direction to kind of connect. So I can connect from this side to that side to this side. So it kind of gives me a play area to stay in, almost like when you're coloring. You have your little area you can stay in. Um, so then I'm going to go here. And then I wanted to just do kind of like a, I was thinking more of a, like a zebra type of thing and run out of plastic. That looks really, really good. So that's kind of what I was going to do over there. So without breaking it all down for you, that's kind of the whole theory is this is a little portion of it and then we're going to take it all the way around. So I'll just go over and show you a little portion and then we'll skip on to the next one. Okay. So I've got my basic eight right here in my hand, my lines, pounce. And don't need my book. Okay. Well, let's head over to the machine and take a look. 
Ah, oh, the back and forth, the back and forth. <laughs> All right, we'll see if we can master this. All right, so the first thing I was going to do, we were talking about, is I'm going to do that. <coughs> I'm going to pounce that out. And, Corey, what'd you do with the pounce powder? It's right there. You're All right. You're looking right at it. Right at it over in the corner? You're literally looking right <laughs> at it over there in the corner. I don't know what to tell you. All right, so I'm going to get my pounce there. I got my little line chalks to do that one. Oh. Does it seem a little too short for you? Yeah. <laughs> All righty. So I got my guidelines. So I'm like I'm doing right here. As you can see, my lines are right here. All pounce for me. That basic eight. I'm going to use that for everything. Is what I'm noticing anyway with learning all this along the way. Okay. And let's get me a stitch there. Up and down. Whoops. I'm trying to do too wide. It's all right. It's a design choice. Mm, not sure if this was the design I was going for, but it's the <laughs> choice that I got. <laughs> All right. So technically I could pull, you know, go back out, but I'm just going to go ahead and pull my thread up. Cut it off here. So then I have my little center. Oh, pulled my thread. <laughs> that happens sometimes. Um, Diana, real quick, in the comments, someone was uh, asking about pouts powder. Uh, if we sell it, you want to go and answer that question? Uh, yes, we do. <laughs> <laughs> what colors? Where can they find it? Stuff like that. So we do sell it. Um, it is going to be on longarmsupplies.net. We have white and blue and pink. Mm -hmm. um, and they all do something a little different. Yeah, the white's an iron off, the blue is a wash off, and so is the pink. You got that for me? Mm -hmm. It's nice having that assistant, huh? All right, so I'm going to pounce the blue here. I think I'm getting it. You're we'll doing find fine. Out. Looks good to me. If not, we'll put it back down. No, that's good enough. Um. Corey's got this thing all the way back. He's so tall. Well, I can roll it if you'd like. Alrighty. I think I will get it right here. Alrighty. Would you like me to roll it back towards you a little bit? It doesn't matter. It's fine. Okay. Okay. So I am going to use these lines uh -huh. to go up and down. I think I'm changing it up a little bit on the fly. It's all right. Nothing wrong with that. Pulling there. Corey, you want to talk for a minute while I'm trying to figure out what I'm doing? Um, I mean, I don't know what you want me to talk about. <laughs> I think I mean, what, you, what you're working with here is looking at that line direction. I know you're more working it out in your head again of the exact way to keep this stitching uh, as continuous as possible. Because as quilters, uh, especially quilting for the public, uh, when it comes to keeping things stitching continuously, it's very, very important because that's what keeps things moving. That's what uh, less time on that machine means more money that you're actually ended up making because okay. you're able to get those quilts cranked out a whole lot faster. Alrighty, so we're just gonna go with the flow here because this I think I messed up. So, but we're gonna use it this way. Ah, that's nice. Take that out. Go across, come back down. More or less using the one inch lines was my idea to as my, instead of trying to do stitch in the ditch like you do. Yeah. Because I have a hard time holding a ruler. I was going to do it this way instead. And then oh. I'm going to come across. I think it looks good. And that one, are you going all, oh, so you're going all the way up, I see. Cool. Yeah, I might have went the wrong way, but. It's okay. There's no right way to do things. It's, it's quilting. You can do however you like to do it. Whatever's easier for you. 
I think this looks really nifty. Well, and I'm just going to, instead of stitching the ditch, I'm just going to take it back up this way. Uh-huh. Ah, I see. And kind of pick up where your lines were. Yeah, I'm going to have to go back for so because I kind of messed up. And then go back, go back this way again. Yep, just do a little overstitching. Nothing wrong with that. Ah, that's nice. I like that. I'll just finish this off right here, and then I'll go over to the... It's just, that now that I've got it a little bit better, I'm actually, it's fun. That started out pretty cool, actually. Yes, it is. Yeah, you were beating yourself up a second ago. I saw the face. It's looking great. Good movement there with those lines. Uh, like the texture that it's giving it a lot. Okay, so now I'm going to pull my thread up over here. And do my other pounds. Okay. I know a lot of teachers will teach you like to, to try to do continuous to save time. Um, but I find it to be a little bit easier to not do it continu if you can do con not have to do it continuous. So let's see. Like that. And then I'm just going to. Oh, that's kind of cool how those one-inch lines kind of end up meeting up with each other here. That's kind of nifty. Looks like it's moving. I can pull my thread up. Again, using those as my guide. Whoops. Good. Yep, and then I could go up and keep going that way. But I'm going to cut it there, do my little st stitches right over here so I can get you moved on to yours. Okay. You take all the time you need. It looks good. All right, so my next thing was that little loop de doo thing down here. Oh, yes, the, the triangle, yeah. Go around here, up, and then so you can keep continuous on that one, you can go back up, do a little loop de do, come back over here, and then come back out this way. And then that's when I started to do kind of the little back and forth, meeting back up over here, coming back over here. I like doing that curve arc line as kind of your background it breaks up all that straight line work that you have kind of in the foreground there that's kind of what i was thinking when i was yeah. drawing it out is how can i break it up just a little bit and there we go so if i wanted to i could just continue going over here and then go up there and do my little thing again cool all righty well let's go over and check your stuff out okay so we are overhead looking at mine and this is the one that I will be working on next. And this one is called the Northumberland block. Is that what it's called, Mom? Yeah. Northumberland block. All right, party on. <laughs> um, so this one, like the coloring on this one, uh, when you actually see the panel, I printed this off quickly, so it's got nice stripes there in the fabric. But not a bad way to play it if you could piece up all those lines to hit perfectly like that. It'd look pretty cool. Um, here in the center, looking at, again, a good old um, uh, basic eight, you could do that here, right here in the square. Or you could kind of take it to the next level using the curvy square uh, stencil that we have. If your sizing is a little too small for the curvy square, because it's made for certain size blocks, you could come in with an arch guide or some type of arc angle here. Um, so I'm going to kind of give you what that look would look like here. So that's what we're going to do. We're just going to eyeball our own arcs here. But I saw, I kind of broke this down and I ended up seeing a more of a curvy square look there. I kind of wanted to separate it up uh, and you'll see why in a second back here. Um, so I've kind of got that curvy square look here in the center and then I would jump to the center mark of this and come in with four hearts on um, different angles. So I'll start with this one. So I've got a heart here, a heart here, a heart here, and a heart here. And coming from that, I want to be able to extend into these corners. So I would still be stitching, and I'd stitch a straight line up and do a little tiny heart there and stitch that straight line back. 
that gets you really comfortable with your over stitching when you do that a lot of times um, and it kind of adds in just a little bit of uh, texture there and a little bit of a different look so fix that later and then and this outer portion right here I'd be coming in again with continuous curve it looks so so good but if I did this continuous curve here just like this when you flip this over on the back of the quilt you've got another design here because these will end up uh, interlocking together and look like a nice um, pumpkin seed there in the the, the center portion so that's gonna look really cool uh, so we've marked our way around here there, 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 and there. Just like that. Very simple, very easy to do. We love a good continuous curve. Now, I broke these up. I'm going to draw a line around it so you can see what I mean. I broke these up as uh, flying geese blocks because that's really all they are, these little uh, four quadrants right here. And so from that, that's your Triangle Tango book right there all day long. That's Triangle Tango. So you could find a design in that book that you would like that could work really well for what you're doing. I found one that had another heart, so it's kind of bringing in those same heart designs from the center here as well, so bringing them outside the block as well as just keeping them in the foreground. So if I started here in the center of uh, this triangle, I'd come in with a nice heart just like so, and then I could feather off that heart. So come in with a nice feather here, here, here and same thing there there and there and then for, again another continuous curve nothing wrong with that we love us some continuous curve and you could do all of these continuous curves at one time even and then come and do these extra blocks and then here in the blue portions in the background i decided to show you how you can do cross hatching with the straight line stencils and your ruler uh, so we'll be doing the inch a straight line stencil on an angle here and it would just end up working more or less like this after it's all pounced out and you could just travel all the way through this until you get to the end and then you work your way across up and then you'll work your way back all the way and then you will have to go back and either jump to this section or as you work around it you could finish off this portion here to end up doing something like that about my lines are it's harder to do <laughs> um, but really easy to follow with your ruler and with all those stencils so a lot of continuous curve here a lot of hearts and feathers and then to separate the background we'd be doing some cross hatching here that looks good can't wait to cool. see it over there all right so let's head over to the machine and Diana and while you're heading nicely have it set up yeah, while you're heading over there I just want to give a shout out to everybody that's watching us from all over we got you know Texas Washington um, and all over the different places Louisiana but Florida miss uh, Michigan but I also wanted to say we have somebody from Vienna Australia Austria sorry I didn't get that wrong <laughs> Austria watching Wow right now live so that's, that's cool. super fun I like that all right so starting off, if you don't have a curvy square or an arc uh, guide available to you, because we do have those, um, but if you don't have it available to you, you're just throwing in a nice, quick, continuous curve here. So we'll start here at the bottom left corner, taking our stitch in the ditch, per se, so we can well, tie Well, did you want there. the arch guide to do it? Uh, if we have one on hand real quick, that'd be kind of cool, so Let's we could sh show you how that... I know there was a lot of... Um, when you were asking what you'd like to see, a lot of it was ruler work. So I tried to use a couple of different rulers in this segment. We'll be doing a few more as we go. And I think, oh, they've got me one. Perfect. So I've got a nice little, this is a six inch arch. And you can kind of set it here wherever you want it to hit. So I've set this and I'm using this line. Love these lines. I'm telling y'all, love these lines. But I'm using the straight line here and matching it up with the straight line of the ditch. So placing my machine where I want it to be needled down, I'm going to put the needle down right there, and then I'm going to find a corresponding straight line that will work well for what I'm doing around this section. So I can kind of have it placed just like so, using my center line to find the center section of this triangle. So I've got a center line right there, and then a straight line to match it up with the piecing. I've got my hand held nice and tight on that, and then I'll come in with my stitching and just work my way around this till it gets to the point right there just like that so nice easy uh, mark so that I can move it to the next section 
and line it up however I see fit and work my way around that. Ah, that one slipped. It's hard to do this one handed. Um, and once I have that all set up, then I could easily manipulate the fabric and get my way around this as I go. Just like that. I'm telling you, doing this one handed is fun. Get that lined up just like so. And I'm doing it on that very first straight line, holding that nice and taut, and then using the machine as my guide, more or less. Just like that. Let me cut my threads real quick. So I've got that. Then I could jump into the center, but since we are doing continuous curve out here in these uh, blue portions as well, I'm just going to go ahead and do that since we're in the curve making mode. So jump to that. And you could use your guide for this as well, your arch guide for this, um, or you could just kind of take this through to here as you work around it. Hesitating in those points for a second so they're nice and sharp. Just like that. So you have that kind of secondary design built in when you do all these arcs right next to each other. Um, and then here in the center, I could use my basic eight line stencil just to give myself a little bit of marking power. So come in, pounce that. And I've got nice straight lines to put these um, hearts onto for what I'm going to be working on. So starting here in the center, pull up my threads. Just like so. And my threading passes off on that a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> so I will get this going. And here we go. So using that as my center mark portion to do my heart and it does not have to be perfect by any means it's a joy free handing and then we're doing straight line out tiny heart over stitch back oh, that wasn't too bad now that I say it the next ones are going to be horrible see told you taking that all the way there and then I'm going to trim my thread you know how I am about my threads Move that out of the way. Bring that here. Heart. Over stitch back. And then after that, I can trim these threads and I could move to my next portions from that. Now, a lot of it, again, a lot of continuous curve at that portion. I want to show you this flying geese section and then the cross hatching will leave the rest of that alone. Um, but at least for you to see the flying geese uh, portion. So if I wanted to come in with a nice mark to find my center, this is my applique helper um, coming in just to have a straight edge. Mark that, yeah, white pencil on white. Where's my light gray pencil? <laughs> Y'all know I like my light gray pencil so I could see on the white. But to give myself just a nice center point to start from. And I'll tie off my threads there. And this is just, again, another heart. And then outer feather. Outer feather. Just like that. And you would take that and work your way all the way around through that. Come in through, finish your cross hatching. Or I'm sorry, your, not your cross hatching. Your continuous curves uh, to fill up those sections. But that would stitch really, really fast if I wasn't talking the whole time. And then I will take this and we're going to look at cross hatching. So I need a straight line stencil. And I'm just going to use my one inch straight line stencil. Uh, for smaller blocks, you could kind of break this in half and do half inch uh, increments. I'll show you what I mean by that. So I'm setting this at an angle, matching up the corner to the corner of this block. So I get one nice straight line to these points. I've got that set up. I can pounce that on just like so. And what I mean by if you wanted to make it a little bit of a tighter cross hatch, then once you pounce, shift it um, another section over and then you've got additional lines so you can make a much tighter cross hatch if you wanted to once you pounce that down. Rotate this this way, match the corresponding 45s right there and right there. Take your pounce, pounce that over. That's what your cross hatch is going to look like. 
Isn't that cute? Mm-hmm. That's good. And then you can start more or less wherever you would like. I'm going to start over here um, and pull up my threads. And this is just going to work with my straight line ruler, my 4 by 8 Sorry, my face is all in your face. There we go. Um, so I've got my 4 by 8 here matching the straight lines up in this ruler with the straight lines that we have made with our pounce powder. That's how I know I'm keeping it nice and straight. Get to where I want to start. I always start needle down. That helps me with these rulers to get them, get them in alignment. Hold that. And then take this. If it gets uncomfortable, don't be afraid to sh float, stop the machine and shift your hand. Get that to there. And then if I want to work up, I can work my way up if I want to to my next line. If you need to stop, that's okay. Now I've got a nice line to put my ruler lines on. That's how I know I'm keeping that straight. And then I move to the next section. Isn't this fun, Diana? Yeah, I'm just sitting there watching and thinking, like, even though we're doing this freehand, these are so many good ideas for computerized quilters, too, that they can use. Like how to plan out their blocks, you know? Yeah, totally. Different designs. It's all about planning. That's really yeah. what this all comes down to, is just making sure you're having everything in alignment. And, like I said, love these lines on this. Sorry, I know my hands are in your way. But love the lines on these rulers. Ooh, that was close. <laughs> and the things that I could um, accomplish with just having those there. And taking your time in doing this will really give you a nice product at the end. Just like that. And I would work my way all the way through that. And there's my nice little first part of my cross hatch. Cool. I'd work my way all the way around, and that's how I'd have a lovely background. Uh, and then I could w use that in any type of block if I wanted to and give me a really nice design. Uh, and I could, you know, cross over here to this next section or and do that and come over there and kind of work my way around. And then you, as you get through this, you'll learn which direction works best for you. Because if you've got a quilt that's got, you know, not 30, that'd be a ton, but maybe, you know, 15, 20 blocks just like this, once you get that first initial pass, spend some time drawing it out with your chalk pencil and say, okay, I need to go this way and go and put some arrows so you know what the best way is for you to travel to keep it going as continuous and as fast as possible. And I guarantee you, you'll find it out in a split second. All right. So, Diana, you ready for us? I am. All right. Well, I have done played with that one. I'm excited to see what you have got last for us. All right, so I am doing one of the blocks, and this one was called, it's called Jack in the Pulpit. So we're going to do that. I actually am using the Basic 8, let me put that down for a second, the Basic 8 book, 1 and 2. And then I'm using page 52 as my inspiration for what I'm doing. I'm going to add a little bit more since it's a larger block, but that's kind of where I got the inspiration. Um, and that's what these books, these books... Like all the different books we show, you know, even if you don't do exactly what's in there, it really does help give you inspiration on what you could do with that idea or with that that block or with that um, background, you know, like the fun background books. I mean, there's so many different books. And like Corey was talking about early, or the triangle tangle that with all the triangles and flying geese, so many different ideas to do in direction. Okay. So I've got, I'm going to be using my Basic 8, the larger one that I have, since this is a 14-inch Basic 8, and I have it on the 16-inch block. I kind of sketched it out just a little bit already for you. So then what I'm going to do is I'm going to put my center, kind of the same thing I did on the other one when it came to the center. So, I mean, you could change it up a little bit. So if I wanted to, I could go like that, up, and then back around. And then do a small one up and back around. Small one up, back around. Small one up, back around. So you kind of get the idea on that. And then I'm going to take up and I'm going to go up here and do kind of like a little arch like that that was in that design. Go here. And this one's going to be a little bit of a wider quilting to show you more of a simplified block. And then once I'm up here, I'm actually going to take it out, continuous out, and go around down to here. And then up around here. And then make a little simple thing here. And then here. 
back down. It's kind of hard to do this backwards. <laughs> anyway, the idea is that, that I'm going to do my best to kind of catch those up there in those areas, actually. Mm. And while Diana's drawing that out for her next little section, we did have a question pop up in the comments. Are these blocks sold uh, in the set? Uh, are they already pre-cut or are they come as a panel? They are already pre-cut. There are six in that package for you, all different uh, types. Um, but already pre-cut, you don't have to cut them out of a panel uh, to keep going. Uh, or however you want to do it from there. Oh, this is so cute. Look at you fancy. Yep. Keep talking now that I actually got it right. Oh, no, she's okay. So uh, keep talking. Um, uh, good. Uh, what's where said good fabric on these blocks. Uh, but this, this, I just love yeah. what you're doing at it. Look how look at you. Yeah. So that's gonna be the corner. Not that one. Oh. <laughs> it's supposed to be. <laughs> that's why it's dry erase. That's it's why it's dry erase. You can mess up. Easy and then the center. It. And then the center here. I was just gonna kind of do some micro stippling with the applique helper. Like that. Cute. So we'll see how well I do over there. I think you're going to do great. All righty. I'm going to take this over. Okay. You know, Corey, I'm going to be totally focused, so you're going to have to be my commentator. Okay. So I'm going to pounce this out first. <laughs> I thought this was really cool how this 14-inch, this fit perfectly for what we were using. The 14 inch basic eight for a 16 inch block. Yeah, more or less. So, first biggest thing is centered. Just, yeah, centering up that first. There you go. Uh, I was trying to do it at an angle. It's kind of hard. Cool. And then we got this, my little notes. Okay, we like little notes. Just like that. Okay. You want me to roll this one closer to you now? Yeah, that would be okay. okay. I'll allow that. <laughs> oh, you allow. Let's see. I'm going to go that way. And then I added a little echo in. All right. And then here we go. So we're going to do pull my thread is up. I'm going to start here from the center. And I a small one first. Cute. Love it. And then a larger one. And actually, I'm just going to go over here instead of doing the all things to make it a little more simplified. My small one first. And my larger one. I'm using that base, that line in the middle to try and keep um, lined up on everything, right? Mm hmm. I like this. This looks like a little uh, yep. kind of like a peacock feather almost. Like kind of the beginning stages of it. A more of a simple peacock feather because peacock, the feather normally has a bunch more arcs in it. So I would call this more of a simplified one. Yeah, um, I, th I figured I was going to try to make this one more a simplified block. Yeah, I like so it. So now would I go do the stippling next or just do, the, do, do my arches next? Um, if it were me, I would do the outside arches first to lock down the block. Because if you do the stippling, it's going to bring it in because it's a tight stipple. Okay. Um, if this were a real quilt, and it would really uh, kind of skew those inner uh, okay. triangles if you did the stippling first. So then I'm going to come up here and try to get over there and go here to catch this and then go back up. So I'm using that basic eight line mm -hmm. right here as my center to go down to. So again, I guess you could use like an arch if you wanted to, like an arch guide or something. Yeah. And it's okay to stop. Move all the threads out of the way so you can actually see. <laughs> <laughs> back up here to the center and then back out. And then I got my little thing going here. Okay. Okay. Your and little thing going there. My little all thing right. going there. Okay. And then I'm going to actually take my threads and do the design down here so you can see it better. So let me pull this up. Okay. Alrighty. So I'm going to take it over here. Is that an okay angle? Mm -hmm. And then I'm going to start up here. As if I was coming off those blocks. Like I did all this around here, and now I'm coming off the block here. Okay, this one is where I messed up a lot, so we'll see. Mm. Have faith. I know you can do it. 
So the idea was for me to cut through here, mm -hmm. come down. I can already see I've messed up. Come around here. Okay. Then come up here on this side of the... Oh, I see. Yeah, I'm having a hard time seeing. And then come back up, around, like that, oh. back down, like that, and then back over and out, back around, and then keep going. Got it. Kind of messed up there, but that was I the think idea. That's cute. Um, I think it looks good. So then, after I would do all that. I was trying to do it by the book, and it had it cutting through, but it just had it cutting through right here. So That's I just okay. kind of cut through. You made your own design. I think it's cute. Then I'd come up. The idea was to come up here and just do some stippling and just have a really simple block. Okay. I like it. And then I was going to use the... See, Corey had me plan all these out ahead of time, so this is kind of on the fly. He's getting to see this for the first time, too. Alrighty. And then just so I had a little bit more control, I thought I would use the applique helper down here. Yeah. So the applique helper uh, just hooks right on the foot, and then you can use that as your movement. Your thumbs fit really nice in the little divots. Not that that is exactly what the thumb or what your thumbs were made to go, but I, it works well for us. Um, and the things about stippling that are meandering or anything like that that you're really working with is the biggest thing is not to get into a pattern, not to have any points, and not to cross over. Uh, and that's how you have a successful stipple. That's all there is to it. And there we go. Just like that. And then I just pull that off because it doesn't have to, it can work with almost any hopping foot. Um, cool. So I did the stipple okay. <laughs> I think you did everything okay. It looks good. Okay. Well, I kind of ignore that part there. <laughs> but, oh, well. Well, let's show, the, let's show them the other two really quick. We're not going to stitch them out, and then we'll just call it a day. See if we have any questions. So you want to show them the we can just show them over, over there. there? Yep. Okay. Mm -hmm. All right, so we'll head back over to the table. And so we've done, let's see, that was the Jack in the Pulpit block. Yep. I, didn't write, I didn't write the names down of the other two blocks. <laughs> You're fine. That's so we did that one tonight. We have did this. We've done this one. We've done this one. And this one. And then the others that you have in the set to work from is this one right here. This is super cute. Love the coloring of this of all yeah. of these blocks. Love the coloring. You've got that one, and you have. I'm missing one more. Where's it at? <laughs> this you get so many. This one, right? Yeah. Yeah. And this is the other one. Just like that. Super cute. Alrighty, so that was super fun, right? I, I enjoyed it. I had a lot of I had a lot of fun. I hope y'all did as well. Um, this was really cool. These are a great practice tool. Yeah. Uh, not only for uh, hand guiders, but also for computer guiders. I use these at home on my computerized machine to think yeah. of different ideas. It is so fun because you can go. practice with it, turn it into like we had, we're going to turn that one into a bed runner, yep. a table runner, a pillow, you know, kind <laughs> you of any kind of thing. You could yeah. pillow, form. You'd have a cute pillow just like that. Yeah. Um, a couple different things like that. Okay. So fun. Hope y'all enjoyed that. I don't know. I was super nervous. You could tell I was so quiet over there, like trying to do this in the machine as Corey's trying to angle the camera. If you guys can see like how hard it is like to have a camera and quilt at the same time. We need a background camera running while we're running everything. Else. I know, you right? What's going on. <laughs> it's just um, like hard. Okay. Well, thank you all so much for staying with us until the end and seeing how we uh, design these four blocks. So here is giveaway time. Yes, giveaway time. Alrighty, so in the description below, um, and if you're on the computer to scroll down, you'll see it. If you're on a mobile phone, right next to the title, tap on the little drop down arrow and you'll have yep. the description. Mm -hmm. But there is a sign up form that you can go to and we are giving one block away out of the set to six lucky winners. So yes. we're going to have six winners in total. Six winners in total. Uh, one block per person. Um, and uh, congratulations to our winners from last week. Yes. I have heard back from all but two of them, I think. <laughs> um, and they were all super excited to get, they got the fireworks pattern. The fireworks pattern. Yeah. Fun. Um, so this week, there'll we'll, we'll, we'll be six winners, six lucky ones, and we'll six ship these blocks. out to you. Um, no matter where you were, one of our winners was in Canada. Canada. One yeah. was in, you know, they're all over the place. So we'll yeah. ship them out to you. Yep. Um, but these blocks are available on our website. 
website, www.longarmsupplies.net. The link for it is in the description below as well. Add them to your next order. You're yeah. going to love them. And just don't forget, forget that the contest is only 72 hours. So yeah. 72 hours from our video tonight, which is April 22nd, 2021. Yep. So just because this, this vi these videos last forever, we just want to make sure. And then the link will be taken off. So oh. if you watch this within the first 72 hours. Yeah. Go ahead every and go week. fill out that Thank form. You. And you're going to get that giveaway. Yep. So. Awesome. All right, or you'll be thrown in for the giveaway. I guess I can't just yeah, say I you're going to get it. Can't you'll be thrown it. into a random drawing. Yeah. Uh, well, thank you all so much for joining us. We'll see you next week here at After Hours. Bye. Bye.